Hi everyone, this is Balash from Orbeez Gadget Reviews. Today I will be reviewing FL Sun's latest 3D printer, the S1. FL Sun was kind enough to send me the S1 to test, and although I knew the dimensions, I wasn't expecting this massive crate to show up. The box inside wasn't much smaller, and as you can see, there are instructions on how to unpack it. First, we need to remove the huge foam insert, which is no easy task, and here is the printer itself. I'm not sure if you can grasp the dimensions, here it is already standing, it required two of us to turn the box and then we tried to follow the instructions and pull the printer out by the plastic cover, which was moderately successful. To put it in place, we needed two people again because of the weight of 41 kilograms. Now it's in place, and yes, you have to be careful when you remove the tape because the main window isn't attached yet. Coming back to the foam insert and the contents, we get a toolbox with lots of useful things, here is the power cable, some paper, half kilogram of high speed filament and the touchscreen unit. The assembly is not that difficult if you follow the instructions. The top door is already installed, but we had to install the larger one at the bottom. The touchscreen also needs to be connected. All USB cables are labeled and the fourth has only one possible connection. The touchscreen also needs to be screwed down, then these clips need to be removed from the belts, this is the inside of the printer before the first run. There is a small box with the desiccant for the filament dryer, which is in a plastic bag, that one needs to be removed. Now we just need to switch the device on. This is the startup screen, you need to select the language and then connect to your Wi-Fi network. Once the connection is established, a calibration process follows, which on paper takes 10 minutes, for us it was a little longer. The motor calibration isn't that interesting, the vibration compensation can be weird if you've never seen anything like it, you can hear a whole bunch of different noises from the printer. Let's load the filament while the printer is still working on bed leveling. Let's tap load and wow, this thing is loud. Watch out, the noise level is intentionally set low as I speak, but I will try to give you an idea of the fan noise. Two things to keep in mind before you start printing. There is a protective layer on the camera that you should remove if you want to get a decent recording. The other is the light. At first I thought we only had a single light source on the right, but there's actually another one on the left. For some reason the wiring here wasn't perfect, I had to push it a bit to get the light to work, now it's much better. Let's try out the first Banshee, a stock one loaded on the printer. It shows 30 minutes, let's see how it performs. Yes, it's fast, very very fast. And according to the printer, the actual printing time is only 8 minutes, insane. If we check more data on the console, it was actually 8 minutes 25 seconds with a total print time of 9 minutes 22 seconds. Still, the end result is very impressive and looks pretty good for such a fast print. Let's try another sample model, the cat. This was printed in 27 minutes, which is also very impressive for the size, and we have a nice and even smooth surface. Another example, the dwarf paladin, a pretty smooth end result, printed in 1 hour and 10 minutes. Just for comparison, I have the FL Sun V400 in the same workshop, at a similar distance from the camera, and I started the print with that, you can hear the difference in the noise level, this is quite significant. The main difference in the S1 is the fan used and its position. It's in the upper area with this tube that supplies air to the print head and it spins at an insane 40,000 RPM. Apparently such an airflow is required to achieve the expected speed, but to be honest I wasn't prepared for the noise level. You can get used to it after a while, but you won't keep this printer in your bedroom for sure. Now back to the web interface, you can see this during printing. There is a lot of information and you can also change the settings on the fly, but the webcam image is rotated 90 degrees by default. Luckily, you can change that in the settings, it is here, much better now. There's a dedicated slicer for the printer by FL Sun, creatively named FL Sun Slicer. 
You can also load the same web interface here to monitor your printer if you wish. The slicer has some pretty advanced settings and features. You can quickly split your models for example, but there are other things you will miss such as the lack of tree support. I tested the printer with this model here. I used it for a comparison on my LEGO channel, you can watch the video by clicking on the link below. At first I used normal filament, but still at full speed, and as you can see the end result is not so nice. Later I bought high speed filament and printed the body again, and this time it looked much better. Printing an object containing more than 300 grams of material in less than 5 hours is quite impressive, the printer is really fast. So the print performance is solid, but there are some annoyances with the software. First layer error detection always found a problem for me, although there are no real visible issues. I've had a few instances where the initial calibration sequence was complete, but then the printer forgot to actually print the object, it just stopped. Time-lapse videos can only be downloaded via USB and only a single file is created which automatically overrides the previous recording. Also, the file is not always actually placed on the drive when copied. All of these issues are related to the printer's firmware, which I'm sure will be updated in the future. I think it's great that we can dry the filament in the printer itself and that it has a closed compartment for this, but using this limited space is sometimes a challenge. I also had a few cases where I had to help manually during unloading by disconnecting the tube and pulling the filament. So, how is the experience so far? I would say it is mostly positive. I really hope we get quick and frequent software updates to fix the annoyances. This printer has a hefty price tag, but I don't think you can get the speed and print volume out of the box for less money. Of course, speed isn't everything, so you can decide if this performance is worth the price for you. I plan on doing more videos with the printer, so let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you would like to see, and please let me know what you think of the device. See you next time, bye bye.